Hello, my name's Deborah Greaves. I'm a professor of ocean engineering at the University of Plymouth. I'm also the head of school for the School of Engineering, Computing and Mathematics, and I'm the director of the Coast Laboratory. Today, I'd like to welcome you to our Coast Laboratory, and we're going to give you a, a tour of the facility and introduce you to its capabilities. So this is our Coast Laboratory. Coast is Coastal Ocean and Sediment Transport Laboratory, and this is housed in our marine building here on campus at the University of Plymouth. It opened in 2012 and since then we've been running a whole series of experiments, research, teaching and also commercial work uh, in offshore renewable energy. Our coast laboratory has got a number of facilities designed for hydrodynamics testing. Uh, we have our large ocean basin which is a large basin, 35 metres long, 15 and a half metres wide, and its maximum operating depth is three metres. Uh, it's a very unique facility, and it combines together uh, wave generation with current generation in two directions, longitudinally and transversely across the basin. And that means we can create all sorts of wave and current conditions, wave conditions on their own, and wave and current conditions in combination with one another. Um, it also has a raisable floor, which means we can operate uh, the ocean basin at a number of different water depths, up to a maximum of three metres. And rather than draining the tank down every time we want to change the water depth that we're doing our experiments at, we can raise the floor and leave the water where it is, and we can run the experiments at whatever water depth we need, up to the maximum of three metres. We have, in terms of the wave generation, we have a series of 24 uh, hinged wave paddles, uh, two meter hinge depth, so we can generate really quite large waves up to just under uh, a meter wave height in the, for regular wave generation. So we use our hydrodynamic facility here, the, the ocean basin, to scale down the conditions at sea and to test structures and devices and see how they behave under those scaled down wave conditions. We run a series of experiments in offshore renewable energy, covering offshore wind, wave energy, tidal stream. And we also do uh, experiments looking at the hydrodynamics of, of ships and other structures and floating structures. And also we've done uh, quite a bit of work looking at wave impacts on offshore structures, including uh, rock lighthouses. As well as our ocean basin, which is our, our large-scale basin for large hydrodynamics experiments, we have a coastal basin, which is 15 metres by 10 metres, and that's a shallow water facility where we can run coastal engineering experiments, and we can also include sediments and aggregates in that facility, so we can look at uh, beach dynamics as well. Within the coastal basin, we also have uh, wave generation in combination with current generation. And then as well as our coastal basin, we also have uh, two long glass-sided wave flumes, which we can run two-dimensional experiments in. My name is Dr Kerry Collins. I'm a lecturer in mechanical engineering and I'm the admissions tutor for the mechanical engineering and marine technology subject cluster. One of the principal benefits of having a facility like this is the controllability of the, of the environment. So we can simulate waves, both regular and irregular, that allows us to, first of all, characterise the devices that we're testing, but also simulate them under real conditions. On top of that, we can add currents, both along the basin and across the basin, and we're starting to build in wind into our kind of experimental profile. We can have all this together and in a very controllable and repeatable manner, which you just can't do out in the field. So the experiments that I've conducted in the basin involved uh, an array of five of these devices that we looked at moored individually. So with mooring lines going down to the seabed or our basin floor, um, but also interconnected, so moored together so that we can look at reducing some of those mooring components, some of those anchors to reduce the cost. From the array test, we were able to find that the interconnection of the, of the five devices had benefits for the performance of the, um, of the energy extraction, so the performances of the devices themselves, but also we saw higher loads in the mooring lines in certain configurations. I'm Tom, I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Plymouth, studying uh, 
the extreme responses of offshore renewable energy devices. The laboratory has been a really uh, invaluable resource in the studying of those devices. Um, it's really helped develop my understanding of how extreme waves uh, cause different responses in different types of devices. So looked at floating wave energy and floating wind energy devices. Um, and in particular, being able to compare the uh, results from numerical and physical models um, to get closure on, <laughs> on how they agree has been useful. So it's, it's been really, uh, really interesting and a lot of fun using, using the tank. Um, especially sort of being able to work with industry as well on current devices and, and seeing yeah, how real devices would uh, respond and hopefully adding something useful to our understanding of, of extreme responses of different types of device. Hello, uh, my name's Martin Han. I'm an Associate Professor of Coastal and Offshore Renewable Energy Engineering. and I'm also the Coast Lab Academic Lead. We've got quite exciting development coming up for the Coast Laboratory in that we're installing a new three metre by three metre wind generator. This is a project that's been funded by the UK's Engineering Physical Sciences Research Council, the EPSRC. And in the next few months, we'll be installing our new wind generator. This will enable us to do wave, current and wind testing simultaneously. And we're really excited about what this will enable us to do in the area of floating offshore winds and also other kinds of tank testing. Our new wind generator is going to be mounted on a new purposely designed gantry and it'll allow us to locate the wind fields anywhere within our basin and also angle it within uh, plus or minus 25 degrees of the main axis of the tank. Myself, John, and uh, I'm working as a research fellow uh, in the Portos project uh, in the Plymouth, University of Plymouth. So I'm basically from India and I finished my PhD in India. And as soon as I finished, I got the job here to do some work on the marine renewable energy. This is called as a flume um, and I'm working on the wave energy converters, basically the oscillating water column. Uh, when the wave interacts, uh, when crust and trough goes uh, back and forth, the, the water inside the chamber rise and fall that pushes the air in, uh, outside and um, sucks in. So that runs through the turbine and produces the electricity. Basically, uh, I'm using uh, regular and irregular waves um, because uh, mainly the regular waves used to optimize the different parameters I'm trying to work out here uh, in uh, the power takeoff and other parameters. Uh, irregular waves is mostly resembles the uh, real field that gives more understanding of how things work in the system. Uh, I'm also planning to work on extreme wave scenarios in the near future with uh, focused waves and group waves and so on. So, so that gives uh, um, the larger extreme wave scenarios uh, how it uh, affects the system. Yeah. Hi, my name's Alastair Reynolds. I'm the lead technician in the Coast Laboratory. So our roles are slightly different depending on the clients in the lab. So for students, we work with the students with undergraduate class practical, setting up the practicals and making sure they're ready for the lecturers to actually teach. Once the students get to dissertation level, then we work more closely with the students and their supervisors, actually working out exactly what they want to do with their project and getting involved with the build and design of their projects as well. Then for researchers who come into the lab, we spend more time building models and working with them to actually work with more complex instrumentation. And for commercial clients, it's more kind of looking after their needs once they arrive. So we plan their tests with them and we work with them designing their models, but we tend not to get involved actually with the manufacture of those models. So there are a few clients we work with over a number of projects. We have a client who's just been in, who's been testing in here for several years now, with the models getting more complicated every time and getting closer to actually going out to sea. We've got another client who's coming in in a few weeks' time who's actually testing a slightly different model to what they were testing before based on what they learned from being here previously. So the development cycle is working. As a whole, we want to run our Coast Laboratory to support and accelerate the development of, of offshore renewable energy and also understanding around uh, coastal engineering, coastal impacts and design of coastal defences, beach dynamics and so on. And we do this through, uh, we, we run our facility through three different lines. We, 
We use it for teaching our students. We have a range of undergraduate programmes that use these facilities. Um, also postgraduate MSc programmes and, and a large number of PhD students. So we do teaching within these facilities. We also carry out a lot of research and, uh, and we also do commercial work. So, for example, we're leading the Offshore Renewable Energy Supergen Hub at the moment. We do have a large amount of research in that area across offshore wind, wave energy and also tidal stream technologies. And our facilities, the, the ocean basin is probably used about uh, half and half for research and for commercial work. Uh, as a whole, the facility, we support, as I say, teaching, research and commercial work and we aim to have about a third of our time spent in each area. And wherever possible, we're looking for synergies between our teaching, research and commercial work. Uh, well, we want to work with our collaborators in industry to develop research projects and also to talk about that research within our, within our teaching as well and to get our students engaged with those research projects and with those commercial projects, uh, all for mutual benefit. <laughs>